Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to this evening's edition of Let's Talk. Uh, please continue to support Let's Talk and Huda TV in general uh, on our Facebook page, which is <coughs> www.facebook.com slash Huda TV. Please like and share the page with your friends and family. It is an excellent tool, tool of not only da'wah, but of communicating with us as well. Uh, send us a message and we can understand you know, your, your suggestions, your, your, your opinions, your thoughts, and your feedback. Uh, and you can suggest topics as well as presenters and scholars as well. So please continue to do so, uh, as well as YouTube, which is 3w's.youtube.com slash Huda TV. And if you're in a, far, uh, if you're in a country with it without a strong satellite signal, you can enjoy the online streaming there or simply enjoy the uploaded videos that we have there for your uh, educational benefit. Uh, don't forget our Twitter account as well as, of course, email, uh, which is talk at huda.tv. I uh, certainly hope you have enjoyed Let's Talk, this uh, series, this season rather. And in this episode, we have another wonderful topic and we have some special guests as well. And what really makes this episode and this program special, I believe, is that we do have uh, in every episode uh, guests from different countries. In this episode, we have a guest from Nigeria, a guest from Alexandria, Egypt, a guest from London, as well as a guest from Guinea Conakry, and I am uh, from the United States as well. So five people on the set with five different backgrounds. So we would like in this episode, we certainly hope it's beneficial, uh, to speak about not only how to be a good Muslim, but what exactly does that mean, uh, especially considering that we come from different backgrounds and cultures and countries. So how is it and how can we practice Islam and be the best Muslim that we can be uh, in, de in different cultural settings and contexts. I think it's very important uh, because as the environment changes around us, we do have to adapt to that to some degree uh, without compromising our Islam. So let's talk about that. You guys, let me in introduce my guest. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers. All right, you guys, thank you for being with me on this episode. Let's talk. I want you to uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves one by one. Tell me a little bit about yourself, what country you come from, uh, and, and where you are now. Nazif Abu Bakr, by name, Nigerian by country. <laughs> okay, I'm in my early 20s. No. Okay, great. Now, what part? I, I know Nigeria itself is a, a diverse federal re fe federation with many different states. Really, culturally, uh, educationally, yeah. religiously. Yeah, so talk about that. How many states do you have? How many different languages spoken, ethnic groups, uh, religious groups even in your country, Nigeria? Okay, definitely the total number of languages spoken in Nigeria is es uh, estimated to be around. 3,000, uh, 300, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yes, 300, that's still yeah. a lot, yeah. 300. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, that's still a lot, but yeah, 300, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. But there are three main languages, Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. What about Fulani? Fulani, Hausa, Fulani, uh, can okay. be, uh, can okay. be but the classified. Okay, but category. the national, the federal language, the national language is? Is English language. Okay, interesting, okay. Yeah, the medium of interaction between people, medium okay. of communication, it okay. is uh, the only language that links the whole country together. Okay, now how many language. different ethnic groups do you have and how many different religious groups do you have? Well, specifically, no one can tell you how many tribe or are there in Nigeria. But religion, we have some people, uh, Islam, which is the large, largest religion, followed by Christianity. Okay. Yeah, and some animist. Animus means like native religions? Yeah, you can say like that? native, yeah, like traditional religion. You know? Okay. But They're then neither Muslim nor Christian. Okay. I want to ask you this. So when I asked you how many tribes there were, you didn't give me an answer why. There's so many? So many tribes. Okay. Okay. That's my question. Yeah, okay. but Great. we have three. Main tribes. Yeah, main tribes. House of Fulani. Fulani, Yoruba, and Igbo. Okay. Great. Three Inshallah. male languages. Okay. Thank you. There are a good deal of languages over there. And when we, after all the brothers introduce themselves, I want to add one more com co component, component to this discussion. That is, I want you guys to tell me some cultural practices or obstacles in your native country that are obstacles that prevent you from being a good Muslim. And also mention some wonderful qu cultural qualities that help you along your way uh, to being a good Muslim, inshallah. But before we, go ahead, brother. I want you to answer the same question. We'll go around the circle, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. My, my name is uh, Yasser al -Ashkar. I'm from Alexandria. I'm 22 years old. I'm doing a uh, Bachelor of Commerce from Alexandria University Great. in the third year right now. Uh, are you going to take any courses with you uh, next year or are you passing course, all your classes? Of course. No, I'm just passing, but maybe like after I'll, I'm done with my uh, bachelor, I'll go for some courses because <laughs> <laughs> you can't just <laughs> live right time. now without any courses. So um, I was in India, by the way. I stayed okay, let's talk about that. Go ahead. I stayed there for two years and um, I left there from Kuwait when I was 17 years old. So when I went to India, it was whole like a different place, different community, different culture, different place, you know, um, a variety of uh, various religions. Matter of fact, you got Hindu, uh, Christians, uh, Muslims, and uh, of course the main one is uh, our Muslims. And uh, 
Hindu and Christian. Okay. So uh, basically, in New Delhi, in the capital, in the two largest cities in whole India, which is Mumbai, uh, which it was actually Bombay, but they changed the name in America because every time an Indian calls American, it's like a bomb bay. So bomb. <laughs> so there's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so they change it to Mumbai. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so to get avoid the uh, the, the machine. <laughs> 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 so, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so there are almost like uh, three thousand uh, languages there. Dude, that's amazing. Three thousand. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's, uh, it's it's wonderful because you get an Indian. I had an Indian friend, and I was like, hey, well, what is this guy saying? And he said, I don't know. I said, you kidding me? You're Indian too. It was like he's from another place. Uh, I don't know his language. That's good. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but the main thing is Hindi language, and uh, in the capital, it's like uh, a combination between Hindi and Urdu. Urdu, which is the the, the, the language of Pakistan. Right. right. It's kind of similar to Persian and Arabic, written in the same letters. Okay. So you get a, a variety of uh, various, various. Uh, okay. Great. Everything. And I want you after we finish going on the circle. When I come back, sure. people, I want you to mention. The unity that you experienced in the main mosque there called Jamal Well, the thing, thing is, in, uh, when I experienced uh, a weird thing in, in India, it wasn't the, w the same thing in Kuwait when I left Kuwait. Because in India, uh, there were some places, some parts in India, I couldn't even hear Azan. Oh, you really? Feel me? So yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't uh, comforting. You, feel, you felt that something is messing. SubhanAllah. Missing. SubhanAllah. I was, I was like, I wanted to just to hear it. You know? Yeah, Allah I wanted Allah to hear Allah. it. So, um, and there are other parts in India where you get communities of just Muslims. So you have mosques and, and um, you know, halal like meat all the Islam, the exactly. Every, uh, I, had a, I had a trouble in India with uh, halal meat. And actually one time I went to buy some cake. Right. So uh, I took a bite. And uh, that's when I felt that something is like tasting weird. So uh, I asked the guy, hey, what do you put in, uh, tell me the integrity of, of this cake. And he was like, okay, this, this, this. And then he mentioned alcohol. I was like, what? Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I want you to mention so when you come back around. That's, the that's, that's, that's a problem. That's, yeah. a, you know, that's a problem. I didn't even know. So uh, that's when I stopped using, like, buying cakes from there. And uh, Right, right. Same thing with the meat. You have to ask before using it. Hey, this is because um, most communities, you know, you have to eat halal meat, so. Yeah, right, okay. That so was a problem. That was a problem, okay. but you get past it, past okay. over it uh, some, after some time, after you get used to it. Yeah, we'll come back around and sure. talk about the ch challenges in India, inshallah. Sure. Uh, brother, Brother Liz, I know you're from London. You've been on the program with me before. Thank you for being here. I want you to talk about some challenges um, uh, facing Muslims uh, in the UK, uh, and also some obst obstacles and positive aspects that help you along your practice of Islam, and how can you how the society enables you to be a good Muslim, inshallah, if you want it, mm -hmm. and how there are some challenges facing Muslims there as well. But before you answer that, I forgot to mention, I want you to speak briefly about the diversity there, uh, a little bit about your country. Give us a cultural background uh, of, of, of London in, in, in particular. Yeah, um, London is a very extremely uh, multicultural city. I mean, you have people from all over the world in London, from every continent, okay. and you'll find everyone <coughs> in London. Um, right. So, um, in terms of understanding each other's culture, I believe that there are um, very little barriers. I mean, we will understand each other uh, from a religious perspective, but also just from a cultural perspective. Um, in terms of how we behave, how we speak, um, the foods that we eat, right, and okay. what have you. So, there's um, a lot, a lot of multiculturalism in in London, and um, it makes it easier for me when I travel to other parts of the world to understand. You know. You know, the, the mindset or concepts that of um, religions or <coughs> of uh, other nations have, right? Because yeah. um, I'm I'm used to differences, so I'm yeah. used to understanding a person before behaving with him in right. in a certain way. Yeah. Whereas maybe in other countries where it's just dominated by one, yes, you know, sometimes um, they may not understand where I'm coming from, but yes. maybe I understand where they're coming from. I like that. I, I prefer the multicultural environment because it builds tolerance and understanding where yeah. otherwise you feel a little bit narrow-minded. Yeah. But let me get back to you on the second question. We'll get that on the second time around. Brother, tell us a little bit about where you're from uh, and tell us a little bit about the country, the cultural background, the linguistic uh, background, the ethnic groups. Give us a picture of, of your world that you come from. Okay. Uh, my name is Suleiman Bari and I'm from Guinea Conakry. And I'm um, a student in Al Azhar University in Cairo here. And in my country, we have a lot of, like, trip there too. 
but I don't know exactly how much, but it could be like a minimum like six or five. The mm. one who are tribes? Not, yeah, tribes. Oh, major tribes, which are uh, Fulani, yeah. Hausa? Like, no, we have the like Fulani and the Susu and the Maninka and the Mon Manda and Toma okay. and Gersi. But like uh, the national the language, it's French, you know? It's actually French. Yeah, French. Like uh, because in the capital, if you're gonna communicate with people who's French. like different, it's your language. You're gonna communicate with them by French. Okay, lingua franca, as they say. But brother, I want to ask you, what about uh, ethnic? I mean, excuse me, religious groups. Mm -hmm. It's all Muslims. Is it mo mostly Muslims? Is it Christians? Is it what is it? Yeah, like there's uh, some ethnic there. Most of them are Christian. Most of them are Muslim. Most of them too. They just like you know, they in here. They don't know you know because. Some of them, they live like uh, the place they live, even if like Islam not going to reach their law, you know? Yeah, uh, I understand. Okay, but we could say Muslim and Christian perhaps dominate the scene there. Yeah. Are you guys, uh, next episode, we're go ahead. But like the Muslim is the majority. Most of the people like, in the Muslim, like 90% of the whole oh, okay. Muslims. Oh, okay, great. Oh, great, okay. Much yeah. just like here in Egypt, or mm -hmm. more even, great. You guys, uh, in this episode, we're talking about how to be a good Muslim and uh, what obstacles and challenges face us on the way and what is helpful in the various cultural contexts that we come from. So let's take a look, a, a quick look at this report, you guys, uh, about how to be a good Muslim. Uh, inshallah, it, I know it's a big topic, but let's talk about it. And we'll be right back after the short break. These questions now can be already answered because the person who's saying, I want to be religious, but something is stopping me. Hopefully they heard about yeah, Jenna's motivation. This would be a motivation. Maybe now. it's bad company. Maybe uh -huh. it's laziness. Maybe it's your addiction to entertainment. Turn the thing off. Erase the games off your phone, for God's sake. Get, get a life, really. Oh, people are so addicted to entertainment now. And then they say, I can't feel anything in prayer. Well, what a surprise. You have to get off of the screen. You just have to get off. You know, it's ironic. We're going to be on the screen. But if you're going to be on the screen, be, some, be there for something productive. You get motivated to play the Xbox and then win the game and beat everybody at it. Yep. Right? And then you turn into a, a couch potato at the same time. It, takes, it makes you less of a human. It really mm -hmm. does. The only thing you can compare people playing video games, what, what other creature can sit in the same place for hours and hours and hours and not move? What animal on the earth can do that? I mean, even a snail is slowly trying to move <laughs> from its position, <laughs> right? This is a really pathetic state for a person to be in, yeah. to sit for two and a half hours before a movie. And the only time the muscle moves is for a popcorn to go into the mouth, right? Yeah. You know? This, so it, what a surprise you're not motivated. You know, this, this is one thing. Bad company is another. A company that's in itself addicted to entertainment, what's it going to do for you? You have to be around people that are intellectually stimulating, that are doing good things around you. And, and a big thing also is to not be alone, especially for young people. When you're alone, you are shaitan's lunch. You're done. You're going to end up doing the wrong thing, I guarantee you. You need to be around in a safe environment. If you want to be alone, go to the masjid and be alone. Go to the masjid. Go sit in the library. Don't Just be alone. Don't be alone, especially not in your home. You have an internet connection at home, I don't need to say more. Don't be Cruising home. for a bruising, is that saying? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they said that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. With that report from Brother Eddie from the Dean Show, as well as Brother Norman Ali Khan, um, wonderful, beneficial. I certainly like what he said about the social media, although I always uh, encourage everyone at home to, to like and support us via our social media platforms. I do believe it's important to unplug sometimes. I was at home uh, last night, and I... Uh, you know, picked up a book from written by a professor, Dr. Donald Cole. Uh, it was titled "From uh, My Road to Islam: From Texas to Saudi Arabia and Egypt." And sometimes it feels good to pick up a, an old a hard cover, a hard copy of a book, and enjoy it and read it. I know there's a lot of beneficial information online, but I think it's important to step away from that sometime and just kind of unplug. And perhaps it can this can help us on our way to being better Muslims, inshallah. Uh, before the report, I did uh, promise you guys we would speak about obstacles and challenges and things that are beneficial and helpful on our way to being good Muslims in the various cultural contexts that we come from. Uh, my, the, my participants this afternoon, or this evening rather, uh, we're, we are five in the studio and we come from five different countries. Uh, Nigeria, Egypt, also uh, the Egyptian brother uh, Yasser has stayed in India for some time, a brother from the UK as well as Guinea Conakry in West Africa. Uh, so it gives us uh, different experiences that we can share with you guys. So let's talk about that. Let's go to my right brother Nadif. Talk to me about some cultural practices in your culture, the Hausa culture in Nigeria, perhaps at large that is uh, somehow uh, an obstacle. Uh, uh, it creates problems or challenges on your way to trying to be a good Muslim. And also share one of those. And also if you can share another one on the other side, a Nigerian cultural practice that helps you uh, facilitate your way to being the best Muslim that you can be. 
Okay, Islam came to Nigeria thousands of years ago. But as we know, the real practice of Islam, like in the way of according to the Quran and Sunnah, we have difficulty <coughs> following this, especially youth. Because now, mashallah, there's kind of renaissance, Islamic renaissance is taking place in Nigeria. But all the people, all people, elderly people, they are used to following <laughs> the old way, the, the, the old system of practicing religion, for example, traditional religion. Right. Just brother, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We're going to take a short break, but I want to get back to this point because you said there's a renaissance of Islam in Nigeria, yeah. which is very interesting. Let's get back to this point. Uh, we're going to take a short break. You guys uh, stay tuned for more Let's Talk. We will be right back. Welcome back to Let's Talk. If you're just tuning in, we're having an interesting discussion regarding how we can be a, the best Muslim that we can be uh, in light of the cultural context that we do come from. On this set right now, we have five different people from five different countries. Uh, that is Nigeria, Egypt, uh, and India, as well as London and Guinea Conakry down there in West Africa, as well as the United States. So uh, each culture presents uh, certain obstacles and challenges that perhaps can help us along our way to being the best Muslim that we can be in other countries, uh, per in the same country at the same time, can also have features of its culture that help us along that road. Uh, so let's take a look at, let's get back to Brother Nazif, that you were talking about a renaissance of Islam in your country, uh, as opposed to some of the traditional practices perhaps that weren't that um, great. So talk about that. As I was saying, definitely and now changing is taking place uh, uh, more than it was before in Nigeria. People, mashallah, there is a lot of awareness, religious awareness, especially from youth. Great. But <laughs> all the people, because they are sticked to their old system of religion, <coughs> which is traditional religion. For example, if you study practice religion, you grow a beard, you will face a good challenge from your family. Wow, your, your father didn't have a beard. Why you? Oh, <laughs> so I see. Yeah, I so, see. So, so, something like that, yeah. Oh, when you, uh, they call it, when you go to a specific mo mosque, they say, no, this is a new type of religious brought to you from Saudi oh. We have our uh, old mosque, yes. which you, your even great-grandfather <laughs> great yes. used to pray there. So go and pray there. Okay. They will teach you this. Americans are, su are supporting them. <laughs> <laughs> they are being funded by America. So, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, so there's some challenges there. I really, see a good challenge. But, mashallah, if your parent just dialogue, solve everything. Yeah. Yeah, keep dialogue with the people, uh, with your family, inshallah, they will understand. Okay, brother, now I want you, thank you for sharing. I want you to give me one cultural practice in Nigeria that creates a problem for you and one practice that uh, that helps you. Like, for example, you said having a beard becomes a problem. Really? Okay, so give me a cultural practice in Nigeria that's positive, that helps you along your way. Okay, especially Hausa, for example, shyness, you know. I in Nigeria, for example, the, the, the prime example that I will give you, a smoking is not taken lightly. You will not be given marriage. Oh, really if you great, smoke. that's yeah. great, yeah. mashallah. Wallahi. That's good, I like that so much. So if they find you a smoker in the house of culture, Definitely they don't like it. Definitely, you will bring a shame to the whole family. Subhanallah. And subhanallah, it is a good shame. Talk less of alcoholism. Wow. Which is, wow. <laughs> the, the, the whole environment, maybe they, they will keep you away from the environment. Okay, I recently saw on the news they destroyed like 200,000 beer bottles in Kano State or Re something. Really, like. in Kano State. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah, took place recently. Yeah, great, yeah, okay. They broke bottles which exploded from outside yeah outside but so wonderful i like what you said so in the same culture we have you know positives and negatives so you have to kind of navigate your way through that so really? thank you for sharing that about nigeria about Kano state where you come from brother i want you to speak about uh, your native uh country egypt or india wh whichever you prefer and well, name uh some things a cultural practice that makes it difficult for you and a cultural practice that makes it easier for you well like i mentioned earlier uh india was like perfect but the thing is for a newbie for a new guy for the first time to go there you would have to find as a foreign, as a foreigner, as an Arab, as a Muslim, an a Muslim Arab, you're going to a foreign country where you know nothing about and you're at a young age, you know nothing about, absolutely nothing. So you have to go to this uh, obstacles to, to, to learn from. Yeah. So that's what happened. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's, what I, that's what happened when, uh, when the thing happened with me about the alcohol and cake and I mentioned already that. 
So they put flavor on some food with wine and oh just, right. just, just for the flavor. We call it naka, tam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what happened. Uh, similar also to some kind of uh, meats. Most Indians are, uh, especially Hindu Indians, are vegetarian. They right. don't go for meat. Okay. Why? Because they think that God created the animals just like he created you. So what gives you the right to, oh, right, right. to eat that? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's a blessing that we have Islam, alhamdulillah. So yeah. that's why, I mean, your body does need everything. Right. It does it need protein. meat yeah. and veg, everything. Certainly. Everything does something to your body, to your mind or to your soul or whatever. So anyways, uh, the thing is, the, the good thing about India. Yeah, tell me the positive thing, something that right. helps you. Uh, the positive thing about India is that the Muslim community there is united. Great. There, there's just one. You feel that you feel you really truly feel that there are just one community. Whenever you, you need something, you know, a Muslim Indian and Indian Muslim would do much much better for you. You feel that I, fe I felt welcomed actually. Uh, they all were just welcome me, inviting me to to, to, to numerous events. Marvelous! Uh, the, a guy, a friend, a doctor, doctor friend, a friend, a uh, doctor uh, of mine, a friend. He's a friend, not my doctor. His profession is a doctor. Yeah. But he's a friend of mine. So he took me once to this uh, building. Matter of fact, when I was young, my father was telling me a story about this one man, like uh, years, years ago, maybe hundreds of years ago, and he went to a mosque and he didn't find anyone praying in the mosque. So he, he went outside and he found some people working in a building, you know, building the building. So just right, you know, some workers. Yeah. So, uh, so he called them and he said, okay, come on to the mosque and I'll, uh, I'll give you some lectures and I'll pay you money. I'll pay you just the same amount that you were that working your thing, but, but all you're going to do is just sit comfortable and just listen. And at the end of the day, you're going to walk away. And uh, that's what happened. Uh, and he started teaching them about Islam. He started Mashallah. teaching them about Islam. And uh, day and day, on and on, each day, it kept going, just like this, until this man passed away, he died. So his students got impressed. They, they were so touched by this, what happened. So they continued doing what he did by spreading the same thing, you know, yeah. trying to uh, yeah, make father. people come for, so, so, this is so this story, my father said it, uh, mentioned it to me when I was young. When I went to India, this friend of mine, the doctor one, the surgeon, he, to he, went, he took me to this uh, huge building. It's like a mosque, a big mosque, but each floor got their own nationality. Each floor got their own nationality. Like yeah. you find Americans, Europeans, Chinese, Russians, Arabs, uh, Asians, Australians, you know, whatever you can imagine in the w you find there like a, a community for each uh, community, a floor for each. So um, we were sitting in Ramadan having iftar and that's when the surgeon, he was sitting right next to me and he told me, hey, do you see that man over there with the beard? And I looked and he was like, you know, a righteous man. You could feel that, like he's so, you know, you you'd respect him without even knowing him, without even knowing him. So I was like, yeah, I see. He said, and then he told me the story and said, that's his grand, 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 grandson. Oh, subhanAllah. So I was just like crying like a lot. <laughs> so yeah, it was amazing, you know, the, the spirituality in, in some places. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, brother. That's it. Yeah, because uh, so basically on one hand, it's difficult to find halal meat or you don't know the that's ingredients. Right, yeah. On the other side, you find a Muslim community there united. That's right. And you find beautiful uh, in in events like this and spirituality. As matter of fact, they're tight even like much more than most Muslims because Sometimes after prayer, or as they call it, namaz, <laughs> uh, we uh, sometimes we don't even do sunnah. We right. don't pray this. Uh, right, two right. We after. run. We're they do. They do like they're much better. Okay, so yeah. Thank you. Brother. Yeah, great point. Right. Before I go back to my uh, here to my left, brother, I want to take a quick look at this report, uh, which is regarding this topic: how to be a good Muslim. You guys, so check check it out. Uh, stay tuned, and we will be right back after this report. The more good deeds you do, the more Allah loves you. In Sunan Ibn Majah. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, you all know him, may Allah be pleased with him. One of the ten heaven-bound companions of the Prophet One of the most beloved companions to the Prophet 
He says that I saw in a vision, I slept and I saw in a dream. And before he saw that dream and he told us about that dream, he is telling us that two men from a region up east came and reverted to Islam. They accepted Islam. So they were brothers. One of them was much better than his brother in worship. So he prays a lot of nights and he fasts a lot of days and he does a lot of good things, gives in charity. And this particular person, the one who does good deeds, went to battle and was martyred in the sight of Allah Azza wa So he's a shaheed. So what more do you want? He's a companion. He does a lot of good deeds and he died as a shaheed. One year later, his brother died normally, naturally. So he said, I went to bed one night and I saw in a dream that I and these two men were outside of paradise waiting for the gates to open. So the gates of paradise were opened and they summoned, they called the one who died a year after his brother. The one who did not do a lot of good deeds, the one who was not martyred and it was closed and after a while the doors were open again and the other person the martyr was admitted Talha says I wanted to go in and the angels told me it's not your time yet and I woke up so I spoke about my dream to everyone around me and people were shocked and astonished how is it a person who dies as a martyr and he did so many good deeds. He was much, much more enthusiastic than his brother. Yet his brother is admitted to paradise before him. There's something wrong. And this dream reached the Prophet and he heard what the people were talking about. So he called them and he said, what are you uh, 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 wondering about? They said, oh Prophet of Allah, he dies a year after this martyr and he didn't do as many good deeds as he did, yet he is admitted to paradise first. So the Prophet said, how long did he live after him? And they said, one year. He said, did he fast Ramadan? And they said, yes. How many days did he fast? How many prayers did he offer? How many prostrations did he give? More than the man who was martyred a year ago. By Allah, what's between them is like what's between the heavens and the earth. One year of living does the difference between a normal person and a martyr, which indicates that you should value every single minute that you live and consider it as a gift, a blessing and a favor from Allah. I say what you hear and I seek Allah's forgiveness. So ask Allah Azza wa to forgive me and you. Sheikh Awesome Al Hakim, our resident Sheikh, the host of Ask Huda, live once a week here on Huda TV, as well as other programs. So don't forget to, uh, if you want to hear more of Sheikh Awesome, don't forget to tune into Huda TV uh, weekly and uh, check him out on Ask Huda, as well as other programs. I want to go back to my left brother, Elias. I want you to speak about, either comment on that report if you'd like, and then speak about the issue that we're speaking about, which is cultural um, practices in our countries that prohibit or inhibit or create obstacles for us in our way towards Allah inshallah practicing Islam and on the other hand we want to show a positive side of our culture that has enabled us to get this far and to do more inshallah um, inshallah let's start with my culture and uh, the, Go good, the good aspects okay um, in London as we said is very multicultural so you really see the blessing and uh, the vastness of the Muslim Ummah. So there's Muslims from all over the world in London. Uh, most predominantly, maybe from the Asian subcontinent like uh, Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh, in, uh, maybe in East London. Um, you also have many people from Somalia, have, uh, some, you have many Arabs in West London, like from Morocco. And um, in South London, you have many people who accept Islam. You know, uh, born and raised in England, maybe as Christians or as atheists or what have you, and they actually accept Islam. In North London, you have many people from the Turkish uh, community. So, um, there, like I said, there's a very, very uh, wide-ranging mix of, uh, m yeah, of, of Muslims, sounds like it. mashallah. Um, and, and, and it's reflects in many of the masajid. Um, you have a good mix of, of brothers. 
and uh, sisters uh, from different parts of the world, etc. So when you hear ayat such as Inna Mal Mu'min and Ikhwa, all of the believers are brothers, it can really it really feels like you can put it into practice. Yeah. And you learn about different cultures, different foods, different uh, nationalities and how they behave, how they interact. Um, so for me personally, that's really positive because it's a reflection of, 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 of the Ummah at large. And so yes. when there's um, issues like uh, war in Somalia or war in Chechnya or war in Syria or what have you, then you really feel that like the whole Muslim community feels it. It's not just, for example, if something happens in Somalia, then the Somalians feel it, but everyone else is a bit uh, right, detached. They're, 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 they're heedless. No, I think... Um, on the other hand, you have everyone they know about one yeah. another and the issues and, and what have you. Um, so that's a really positive aspect for me and I find that quite amazing. Um, even when I became a Muslim, uh, before Islam, I, we used to fight a lot of people from Somalia. So Somalians and people, maybe people from Jamaica and like in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our area, they had a lot of big conflicts and stabbings and shootings and what have you. Um, but when I became Muslim, I remember I think the very next day or the same week I had to go to a uh, Walima. So I'm sitting down and now I'm seeing all of these Somali people around me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I don't like it. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's amazing how Allah turned the heart from me having a blind hatred towards them to actually like people from Somalia becoming the most closest friends to yeah, me. Yeah, amazing. Huh? So, and there's so many examples like this in people before Islam, they used to, you know, they're gangsters, they used yeah. to try to shoot each other, kill each other, and then after they become Muslims, that, that hatred just turns into love. Yeah. You know, so that for me is like a great positive uh, for me. Yeah. But on the other hand, because there's so much diversity, there is sometimes... Um, uh, prejudice, yeah. And can we get back? Can we take a short break and continue no this point? No. Okay. You guys, we're going to take a short break. We're having an interesting discussion. I hope you're enjoying it as well, as much as I am. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back for the final segment of this edition of Let's Talk. Welcome back to the third and final segment of this edition of Let's Talk. We're speaking about how to be a good Muslim. Of course, this is a very wide topic which needs a lot of explanation and needs uh, people qualified with knowledge and, and, and scholars to speak about this in detail. However, we are approaching this issue from the cultural context and standpoint. As we are on the set today, we have five people from five different countries. And I believe that our cultural environment has an effect on, on us. So I took this opportunity to, to ask each and every participant this afternoon, this evening rather, what are some cultural features in the country that you come from and the culture that you belong to that help you on your way to, do, to being the best Muslim you can be? On the other hand, what, are, what is another cultural feature that, uh, from the country or culture that you come from that creates an obstacle or a challenge for you on your way towards being the best Muslim that you can be? And we heard from Nigeria, from the House of Culture in Kano State. We heard from Egyptian brother Yasser who lived in India for some time and he spoke about the interesting diversity and dynamics in that you know, massive country itself and the, uh, the multi-ethnic culture that it is. And right now we're hearing from Brother Elias from London who spoke about the positive aspects of being in a really, a truly multicultural com Muslim community which really highlights the, the diversity of Islam. However, before the break, before I interrupted him, he was going to speak about uh, some of the drawbacks or problems that arise from such diversity. Um, so let's talk about it, Brother Elias. Please continue. Yeah, um, uh, sometimes amongst uh, some of the different uh, nation groups there is some prejudice. Um, you know, maybe someone from one country doesn't like people from a particular country or... And this is really... Sometimes it becomes apparent in the masjid. Like you may have a Somali masjid or a Bengali yes. masjid, Pakistani masjid or West African masjid and that divides into Nigeria and the Ivory Coast. Or so yeah. It, yeah. sometimes it can, uh, it can be a bit of a barrier as well. And for the people who were born and raised in London, the issue of intermarriage isn't a problem. So you may have yeah. someone from Turkey that wants to marry someone from Ivory Coast. Yep. Those two, it's not a problem. They're okay. But the parents yeah. who maybe migrated from another country cause big, big, big problems sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So the diversity is a blessing, but at the same time, it comes with a lot of issues, uh, sub yeah. subplots that, uh, that, yeah, that come yeah. with it's it. So it and we have to deal with wisdom and maturity. I, I was in Copenhagen, by the grace of Allah, with Dr. Muhammad, and uh, you know our host was like uh, very gracious, and he said to us, this mosque is the, um, features, you know, people from Arabic background. Uh, this one is Turkish background. This one is South Asian background. And, you know, I understand why that happens, cultural language barriers, but at the same, Somali background. But at the same time, you feel like it, this is becoming a, some sort of problem. 
we have multiple communities, not one community. And, uh, you know, it's a challenge. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, inshallah, you know. Just like in my country, too, like s before all of the countries I went, like it's Cairo here, I met like, uh, like here too, I'm free, you know. But I meet here some brothers, like, uh, you, like before he come, you're going to see him like he's good, you know. But when he come here, you're going to say maybe start smoking or doing something, you know. Because uh, the environment, he sees yeah, it, so he yeah. wants to... Yeah, to do something, because the here is free, like... But, but what, are like what about your country, though, in guinea Conakry? Yeah, guinea Conakry, you know, there is like... Uh, because there, your parents are there. Even if your parents, they didn't see you, but if someone see you are doing something, he's going to tell your parents, or he's going to say, oh, look, at this is the son of... So and like, so. Son and so on, this one. So they're going to talk. So this one... This one, only if you're here, you're going to be shamed, you know? Yeah. To do something. But, like, uh, if you go, like, far away from your country, like, uh, if, uh, because there no one's going to tell you do and this, but if you don't be careful, you're going to yeah. live the way. Okay. Like, to be a good Muslim, you know, it's like, uh, it's between in your, because in your body and your heart and your mind, because it's your, your mo mind or your heart going to push you to go do this and this. Yeah, okay? of course, yeah. You Thank see? You, so... Before your mind gonna push you because you, because your mind cannot to like if you sit only without talking you are thinking about something, so that your mind's gonna push you to do something. So like you're gonna just like or to do like prayer or ibadat, uh, dhikr, you, you see, or keep fasting or like uh, worship Allah like walk up walk up in the morning like into the fajr, <laughs> like uh, read the Quran in the Quran al fajr eh, kana mashhuda. So like to get your Quran order. Like to do some many many things like good because like in the morning to starting in your morning you have to start like by worship, okay? Yeah, so you're right. And then to like knowledge, to reading Sirah of the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu so Alaihi okay? To know what uh, what like his role, what he was did, and to to be a good Muslim, okay? And to serve people, to serve people, to the help people, like uh, we have uh, another story like about the Prophet peace be upon so him. Like when, like he was helping, one lady was helping him to, to carry off his things. He was going somewhere. And then bo the lady doesn't know it's the prophet. He just like talking, just t telling like the prophet, he, there's a one guy, he is come from Mecca here. He's talking about religion, about like do prayer and this and this. This guy is not good. The, the, the ladies are like sweating the prophet, but the prophet doesn't like tell him directly, okay? Right, right. Okay, but she just like keep like talking about something is not good about the prophet, but she doesn't know it's the prophet as helping her, okay? And then when they, they reach the place, or the, the, the place like where the lady yeah, was where going. where they're going, right. Okay, and then, and then you know like nothing, the lady doesn't ask the prophet What's your name? And, and then the and then the lady asks the prof, prophet, "What's your name?" Oh, and then the prophet say, "My name is Muhammad." And then he tell his name, and then say, "Wow, it's you!" So that means it's you, Muhammad. Yeah, Prophet Salam. <laughs> say, "MashaAllah." Yeah, great point. Because bro. like to serving people, MashaAllah is good. Yeah. So and then she, MashaAllah, she be. She sees the good manners. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but I want to mention you. I mentioned when you left your country to for another country, mm -hmm. uh, some people go astray. Yeah. But this, this doesn't just apply to, to, to Egypt. No, this applies, or Guinea Conakry. This applies yeah. to anybody who travels outside their country. Exactly. Like yeah. I am in a foreign country, you were in a foreign, when you were in India, India, because nobody's watching you. So in order to be, a, yeah. this is a test to really be a good Muslim, right? Yeah. Nobody can see what you're doing. You're in Cairo, nobody can see you in Cano State. Nobody, when you were in India, could see you in uh, right. Egypt, right? No one can see you back home, what you're doing now, unless they will turn on the TV, but you know not any point. So it's, I think it's important. This is also part of being a good Muslim. Nobody's watching over you yeah. except Allah. So you have to keep it. Go ahead. Just, just on that point, there's a famous story. I believe it's attributed to Imam Malik, in which um, he was going to school uh, with uh, some other youngsters. And the parents, they started complaining, saying, all of the teachers, they're favoring this boy. You know, they, they, they're saying this boy is better than all of the other children. Why? And so the teacher said, OK, I'm going to show you why he's better than everyone else. And so... Um, the teacher, I think, gave us some sweets or some or some money, and says you have to put this in a place where no one can see this. You no, know, put hide these where no one can where no one can find it. So the children they all run away and they all come back, 
And I believe, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it's Imam Malik, but I heard okay. it was attributed to Imam Malik. Okay. So Imam Malik comes back and he still has the suite. And so um, uh, the, 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 the parents, they, they're, they're, they've been gathered and they're all asking, you know, work or what's, what's the outcome? Why have you brought back all these, all of the suites? And he says, I realise that no matter where I put it, Allah's watching me. Subhanallah, yeah. 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 And so all of the parents said, okay, this is why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we understand yeah, now. So it's, yeah. a, it's, an, it's an important point that no matter where we are throughout the world, we just, if we just remember that Allah is watching us, then should no matter where we put, no matter what culture we're in, no matter what setting we're in, inshallah, we should always be, uh, try our best to be. Our yeah, our best. yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah. And, I, and uh, I, I, was go I, I don't really need to share my experience Actually, because yeah. brother Elias basically said it for me because we come from similar backgrounds so the I, I don't need I to repeat it go ahead I believe that any Muslim who would leave uh, who would go to anywhere he should represent his community he should represent the, the Ummah of Islam because whatever you do you are a reflection of the rest of the yeah of the of rest course. of you so whatever yeah. you do you have to wa you know be careful like represent your Ummah right be cautious mm -hmm. like smile smile you know yeah. Greet people, say assalamu yeah. alaikum, make a like, like good uh, yeah. behavior, set an example for others. Make them like so, so eager to find out yeah. hey, what's like, why are you doing this? Be the reason why they become That's Muslim, right. not why they don't like Muslims. Encourage yeah. them. So yeah. this is yeah. a very, I mean, people should uh, like. And this could be accomplished very easily just with some good manners. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's a great opportunity. But I want to mention that we only have a couple minutes left. If we can just go back really quickly around one time. Sure. I feel like sometimes if you put, as a Muslim, if you put your religious beliefs, if you give them a higher value than the cultural beliefs, whatever culture you come from, even if it's in a Muslim country, then it makes you loved by some and hated by others, or liked and disliked a little bit. I feel this. Uh, do, you, do you feel the same way? Definitely. Tell me why. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> Wherever you go, you have to put Allah as the observer. Don't care about what other people say, whether for or against you. So... And normally, when we are in a community, for example, in an Islamic community, we have a tendency of practicing Islam. But when we are out, it's the nature of a man, you know? Right. When right. you are out, drive, definitely, fun. when you are out, yeah. some people are ashamed to. Everybody feels this at some point. Me too. I, I feel this, definitely. But you have to know that. Allah is watching you and you're doing it not for the sake of showing yes, showing off. Thank you. Yeah. That's Just put Allah at the center of your eye. Don't care what other people say. Yeah, that's at the also end a you will also emerge victorious. Yeah, go ahead. Also get some get good company because you're alone. In a country you don't know no one in. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, have to make a c you have to make friends company of your own mindset. Good friend, yeah. yeah. Like get someone who's just like you so you won't get dragged to what's wrong. To yeah. Satan. Yeah. That's some, like one man, he was, uh, he went to a young man, he went to a wise man in China to learn, to, to, to test his wisdom. So uh, he, went, he asked about him and he was in a high mountain. So when he, wa he, he reached the top of the mountain where the wise man lives, he knocked the door and no one, no one answered for almost one hour. After one hour, uh, a woman came out and she was like, he's not here and he'll be back very soon, just wait for And he waited for another two hours. So after three hours, the, the wise man finally came, the old wise man finally came. So he was like, he found out that the young man was so troubled and angry, like, why, you know, he didn't say anything, but, you know, you could, you could understand of his, like, so what happened is, he, he said, uh, the wise man said to the young man, he, you, would you like some tea? So the man, the young man was so surprised, I mean, I'm really pissed, and he's asking me, do I want some tea? Isn't he thinking straight? What's wrong with him? So what happened is, uh, he said, "Do you? Would you please want? Some, would you like some tea?" And he asked him sec uh, for the second time, and then for the third time, and then he said, "Yes, the young man." So the guy, so the the, so the wise man brought a cup of tea, and then he was uh, pouring, and then it flowed. Yeah. So it came out out of the cup out of the cup. So uh, what happened is the young man was like, "Hey, stop! What are you doing?" And then he kept going. Okay, we've seen it. In, a, in yeah. a couple of places, but it was a different story. So this yeah. is the original one. <laughs> Actually, they stole it from this one. <laughs> uh, what, what happened? Yeah. So what happened is that, so the wise man explained 
uh, you, when you came here, you thought that you're all cool and all great and all smart and that you're so arrogant about everything, that you know everything, that you're a wise man when you're still young and you don't know nothing. Right. So your emotions are so, your emotions are just like the cup. When it's full, you cannot have any more. So you have to empty them first. Right. So you can get the, the, the new one. <laughs> so, that's, so you should represent, you know, don't let your emotions affect the way you, you deal with people. Right, right. Whatever it is. Yeah, that's it's a great point. Yeah. It's a part of being a, a, Go on, a, a good, most of them having good manners. And that's right. Yeah. Hey, you guys, thank you for your time. I certainly appreciate it. I hope this uh, episode was beneficial for the viewers. Uh, you guys, I don't thank you for watching Let's Talk. I, as I said, don't forget to support Huda TV and don't forget to shoot me an email at uh, talk at huda.tv. I hope this uh, episode was interesting and beneficial for everyone, all the viewers at home. Uh, until next time, inshallah, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.